All right, let's get caught up on some book reviews. <laughs> Do not adjust your cameras. Yes, I am wearing lipstick. I came across an old stash of um, lipsticks and lip glosses and stuff, and because it's Valentine's Day, and I literally have been sitting around the house doing absolutely nothing today, and it has been wonderful. I decided to play around with them. Unfortunately, I forgot that this is the kind of lipstick that once you put it on, you can't just take it off. <laughs> I know how to get it off, but I'm just saying, like, it's not like I put it on and just wipe it off. So before I go to bed tonight, I'll take it off. But that's why I still have it on as I'm throwing together this video. Earlier in the month, I got you guys caught up on what I read towards the end of 2020, which meant I had to push back my January book review. So that's what I'm doing now, my January book review. And we're going to try my new little setup where I show you the screen that the book is on and kind of go from there. Let's see what we got. First thing, oh, let's change the view. All right, here we go. So the first book that I reviewed was Temple of Ghosts. And as you can see, I gave it five stars. Let's see if I can scroll down and find my review. Here we go. See, review. Very nice. All right, let's see what I got here. I enjoyed this series from the start, but this is clearly my favorite so far. In this installment, Kate and Jackson are a solid team, even if they don't have the greatest confidence in themselves, and it fuels the story. Plus, they get to travel to Egypt and explore a pantheon of gods not usually heard of in Western culture. The introduction of likable and even downright lovable side characters made this story feel like home, in the sense that only at home and with closest friends and family can you defeat anything that comes against you. I love how both our characters grow in this installment. This isn't just another case of Kate using her abilities to save the day while Jackson acts as her anchor. I also love how Unlike many stories of this kind, our characters gain in strength, they also face additional vulnerabilities. Without spoiling too much, I think it's important for interested readers to know that this one may make you cry, but it is in no way a sappy story. As always, I appreciate the diversity of characters in this book and, respect, and the respect in which each culture is represented in. I can't say enough good stuff about this book without spoiling it, so this is where I stop. Can't wait for the next one. Highly recommended to fans of horror, complex paranormal situations, diverse characters, strong female leads, and smart dark fiction. So that's the first book I finished in January. This is number three in the Ghostwriter series, and I just, I really, I really liked it. I mean... And if you didn't understand what I meant about, you know, these characters growing stronger but then facing vulnerabilities, I've even kind of had the issue of creating a character that just is stronger and stronger and stronger to the point where you're like, what's the point? Where they kind of have like this Superman complex. But that's not the way these characters are. Yes, they get stronger, but then they also have these other things that they constantly have to battle and face, these vulnerabilities. And I think this author does an amazing job with that. All right, so let's look at the next thing. Preparing to write settings that feel like characters was an IWSU book club read. Um, I was very excited about it going in. I didn't know anything about it. I am familiar with this author. I follow her blog. So um, I was kind of nervous about reading it, but I enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. So let's look at my actual review. Come on down here. Oh, it didn't bring me to another page. This one's short. Okay. It says, this was an IWSG book club read. I thoroughly um, enjoyed reading this book because it didn't waste my time. The setting character sketch, the setting character sketch introduced in is a simple and practical approach to writing a better setting. I agree with every insight shared within the pages to some degree and know I will return to this book as a reference guide quite often. My only complaint is that I wanted more of it. It's true. <laughs> it 
it was um, a very short read and lacked one thing I always look for in a how-to or a self-help, and that it's that personal touch. I wish the author had given more specific examples of how they worked out some of their advice, such as showing how a simple setting they created was improved by applying the points mentioned in the book. Still, I want to be clear, this book is very effective even without these additional explicit examples. It's just something I always want to see. If, if, if you don't need to see that, this could easily be a five-star read for any writer generally wanting to write better settings. Highly recommended to writers at any level. And it's true. When I finished reading that book, I was like, where's the rest of it? <laughs> but I really liked it. And I've even gone back to it a couple of times already because I'm working on some stuff. And I always feel like I could do better with my settings. And this book has kind of inspired me to really do better about my settings. So that was that second thing that I finished in January. On to the next. Standoff. By Sandra Brown. Where's my review? Here we go. But oh, I think I clicked on the wrong thing last time. <laughs> yep, here we go. All right. So this one I gave uh, four stars. I actually listened to the audiobook and quite enjoyed it. The narrator did a great job of embodying the various characters and moving the story forward without being a distraction. This is the second book I've listened to from this author. I think I will continue to consume her work in audio format. I think I've picked up on the author's voice and patterns of storytelling. Some things you'll see coming if you're familiar with her work, but you can tell she's a talented author because she always finds a way to either shock you or catch you off guard. If nothing else, she'll get some kind of an emotional rise out of her readers. This was a short listen with a fast-paced plot and the usual steamy scene to remind readers that they can handle action of various kinds. Recommended to fans of this author or mature crime dramas. And I'm not much of a crime drama person myself. Um, I used to, I was telling my mom recently that I used to watch like Law and Order and stuff like religiously, but I think after watching the entire original series from beginning to end and a few of the others, I kind of got burnt out on crime dramas. But I don't mind listening to one of her books from time to time. And I do read other um, crime fiction, which will be evident in something that shows up later. So <laughs> that was that one. Let's see what's next. The Anti-Inflammation Cookbook, The Delicious Way to Reduce Inflammation and Stay Healthy. So I'm very much curious about anti-inflammation and the benefits and all that jazz. So let's see my review. Loading, 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 loading. <laughs> All right, so this one was a four-star review. I enjoyed reading this book and not just because I love to cook. I liked reading about the author's story and why she wrote the book as well as gaining a fresh stock of new recipes. I liked learning about the role inflammation plays in our health and learning about foods that address the issue of inflammation. The book was an easy read with helpful images and lots of practical tips and alternatives. The only thing I felt the book lacked, since the author seemed to take a look at me, I'm approachable approach to sharing her story, which was effective and true, um, was the failure to acknowledge that many people, even in a first world nation, just don't have regular access to the resources required to cook, as this book suggests, on a day-to-day -day basis. The author does a great job of pointing out budgeting issues and seems to understand that this is a financial commitment, but again, fails to hit home the fact that there is a large population that her book won't be able to help and not because they can't get access to her book. Still, I currently have the means and regular access to most of the resources needed to try at least some of these recipes on a regular basis. I simply need to make it a priority. Highly, rec to, highly <laughs> recommended to anyone wanting to learn some anti-inflammation recipes. And so basically what I meant about that is, is the author does do a really good job of pointing out that, you know, this is a time commitment. It is a financial commitment. You'll have to make changes in your current lifestyle 
in order to use this cookbook on a daily basis. If you just want to grab something out of it here and there, no big deal, but I do feel like the author failed to recognize the fact that a lot of people aren't going to have access to the stuff that's recommended for a majority of these recipes on a regular basis. Where I live, we do have things like Whole Foods and a lot of our grocery stores do carry a lot of the items that are recommended. But when I think about my in-laws and where they live, they have their, you know, local grocers. They have one national food, um, one national grocery chain and a Walmart. And just because my Walmart might carry these things doesn't mean that their Walmart does. It's catered to that particular, you know, demographic. And so there are things in this book that if someone who lives up there wanted to do this, it would be extremely expensive because they wouldn't be able to get these items locally. And I know I'm going on a rant. I'm going to breathe down. But I just wish the author had kind of mentioned, you know, had said, you know, you know, this is a great book. I hope it's able to help you. I do feel for those of you out there who are going to have more of a struggle obtaining the items that are needed to make this work for you. I just kind of felt like there was no sympathy there there for, for that because there's a lot of people who, I mean, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Let's look at the last thing that I completed in the month of January. Frozen crime. Yes. This is a five-star read. It's a series I absolutely love. Let me just get into my review. I may have to say a few words afterwards. Oh, here we go. All right. So, I don't know if it's possible to be heartbroken and in love at the same time, but I think that's what I'm feeling for this series, especially this installment. <laughs> I feel like I have a love-hate relationship with this story. I hate that horrible things keep happening to these characters and kind of wish the author would stop writing it and putting them through all this stuff, but then I wouldn't be able to read about them. I love the way these characters face their hardships and come out on top, even if they are scarred for life afterwards. While this installment isn't my favorite of the series, it might be in second place. I want to say so much more, but I'm afraid I will go on a rant and spoil it for the readers and spoil it for others. I will say that while Beth has always been a strong lead female character, she has evolved throughout the series to show the kind of strength that female characters rarely get to exhibit in these kinds of stories. And she's not the only woman kicking butt and taking names. Plus, the good men in these books don't exist in real life. I mean, they do, but they don't, but they are really hard to find. Nuff said before I start spewing all the details and twists of the plot, if you haven't read the other books in the series, please read those first. If you start with this one, because it's totally good enough on its own, you'll be mad at yourself for not reading the other ones first. Highly recommend it to series fans and adult readers of crime thrillers and romantic suspense. So this book, this whole series, it started out, I liked it from the start. Um, I don't think I fell in love with it right away, but I totally liked it, felt it was enjoyable, knew I was going to read more of it, but the more I read of it, the more I fell in love with it. And this one was just, I, I, I should have, you know, put like an indicator on here of this, but, you know, there's a lot of brutality in this story. And, but of course, if you are following the series, you kind of see this, you know, the, see the brutality building up. But the difference that I find in a story like this and other stories that have seemed to have brutality in them just for the sake of, you know, shock value or whatever, is that it, it is actually important to the evolution of these characters and how they are exposed to these, these brutalities and they overcome them. So um, it's not done in an exploit, in exploitive kind of way and I just respect the author for telling stories like this because these are the kinds of stories that I could never write um, and but I, I'm glad that someone is out there writing them and um, can't wait for the next one. So that is what I read in January. I'm doing really good in my February stuff. Um, I'm supposed to be reading graphic novels which I kind of am but <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that later. So please let me know what you thought about what I, you know, read in January. 
you have anything you want to recommend to me, I'll, I'm always into recommendations. And um, just leave, you know, leave me a comment and let, let's talk about it. Otherwise, I think that's all I really have. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. That way you don't miss any of these videos. And I'll see you guys next time.